Hello and welcome to this second video in our series on job analysis. My name is Ginny Marshall and I'm the CEO of DSI Work Solutions. It's our privilege and pleasure to bring you this information. A job analysis with employee engagement is a powerful tool that facilitates injury prevention and injury management strategies. This is accomplished by making these processes objective, that is fact-based, versus subjective, which is opinion-based. Done well, this process should produce a document that is easily understood by all stakeholders. If this process is done well, the documentation will be trusted and actively incorporated into all planning processes that surround injury management and injury prevention. You should be asking, what's the point? Why do all this? It is because of the substantial outcomes that can be achieved in terms of reducing the impact of and even preventing musculoskeletal injuries. This is an outcome that is great for both employers and employees. Of course, the goal is to reduce the incidence of work-related injuries. But when any type of injury, work-related or not, or illness, strikes one of the employees of a company, some of the huge costs are related to time away from work, restricted days at work, and even the loss of a highly skilled and valued employee. So before we delve into the how to do a job analysis in the next videos, let's look at an example of how the documentation from a job analysis is used to achieve better outcomes. You may recall from the first video that I mentioned communication barriers are one of the biggest drivers of cost in workers' compensation injuries. Communication barriers also derail employee trust and derail support of injury prevention initiatives. So a picture's worth a thousand words, and let's take a look at an example of a job analysis document that assists with a return to work case. Here we are looking at a description of a grocery stocker. Most of us can identify with that because we know someone actually manages to get all of the groceries onto the shelf for our consideration for purchase. Let's look at a common scenario. An individual is injured and they receive a work restriction from their attending physician. Let's imagine that that work restriction is no lifting more than 25 pounds and no working above the shoulder level. Now, restrictions are a source of frustration both to the employee and the employer because without any objective information, it's very difficult to interpret them. Often when a restriction is received, it forces the supervisor to turn to the employee and ask, what does this mean? What are you able to do? So the goal of the document that is generated from the job analysis is to be able to interpret restrictions. Better yet, as you'll learn in your video, the goal is to be able to test and accurately pinpoint what an individual is able to safely do. But at a very common level, it can be used to interpret restrictions. So let's consider those restrictions in interpreting what a grocery stocker should or shouldn't be doing in their particular job. So in this case, you will see that we have four job function demands. That's the column here on the left. And each of those job function demands represents something that's important, that's a critical component of what it is that a grocery stocker must do in that particular job. So here you'll see we've identified four, working in the warehouse, moving cartons of merchandise from pallets and onto dollies or carts in preparation for transporting them into the store. The second job function demand, or another term is essential function, is still working in the warehouse and involves moving pallets that have been dropped by trucks that are loaded into different holding areas. This is done using pallet jacks. The third job function demand involves moving the merchandise that now is on a cart or a dolly into the store in preparation for stocking the shelf. And the fourth job function demand involves actually transferring the product from the carts and dollies onto the shelves removing any outdated product and then also rotating product. 
within those four, each one has its own unique set of physical demands. We've got them broken into force demands and movement and position demands here. Now remember our restriction is no lifting over 25 pounds and no work above the shoulder level. So if you take time to look a little deeper, what you'll see is that on first glance, job function demand number one and job function demand number four all involve lifting over 25 pounds. So they're not easily accommodated to this restriction. But job function demands two and three don't require any lifting, although they do require push-pull force. However, that was not mentioned in the restriction, so you start to see where the difficulty in interpretation begins and why testing, as we'll discuss later, can be a very important alternative to getting to job matching an individual to their job requirements. But if we dive a little bit deeper, what you'll see is that in lifting, as in demands number one and four, so long as the pet food product is not handled, lifting does not exceed the 25 pound limit. And therefore, there's potential to assign someone to doing that task, so long as they don't handle the dog food bags. And when we get into working at or above shoulder level, we can see that in any of the functions one, two, and three, that's not a requirement. But in number four, where product must be stacked at the 60 and 70 inch level, we may come into an issue with that. So we do need to consider whether or not the use of a step ladder does accomplish keeping the work below the 25 pounds and below the shoulder level for an individual. So what happens here is that there's an ability to have a deeper discussion on how the restrictions impact what it is the worker actually does in order to determine, very importantly, which job functions the individual should avoid or is able to do, and if a job function can be done partially, what is the language surrounding that? You can do job function demand number one so long as you don't handle the pet food sacks. That results in a return to work, an ability to do that job function demand. So how these job analysis results are documented is very critical to helping employers interpret restrictions. Eventually we'll talk about interpreting test results and being more able to guide people back to work efficiently and effectively and safely. So as we move forward with our subsequent videos, we're going to explore more opportunities to use these results, as well as how do we get to these results. So we invite you, if you are curious, to come to our website, dsiworksolutions.net, and take a look at the job analysis coursework that we have for you. We invite you to take the first lesson in the course without any obligation. We look forward to seeing you in the next video and stay safe.